Can please give it up for Andrew Shanklin. Hi everybody, my name is Andrew, and uh, I'm a teacher. It's my job, it's a weird job, crazy job, because kids just say whatever they want. Like one time I went in my classroom, this kid took one look at me, he goes, Mr. Shanklin, you look like that little virgin boy from Big Mouth. <laughs> which is really neat, because we haven't seen the show, all the characters are virgins, but I still knew which one he was talking about. <laughs> It's a mean kid, right? So, I teach I teach music, which is cool. In CPS, I teach music. So all that means is I am a I am a white guy that tells Latino kids about jazz. <laughs> yeah, there's a word for us. We can say it together. One, two, three. Hero. <laughs> yes, that is what I am. I like jazz a lot. Jazz is cool because it's like music by drug addicts for drug addicts. You know? <laughs> there's like two guys running out, and one's like, "Ah, oh, you finished writing that song." The other guy's like, oh, "I got a beginning." <laughs> The other guy's like, oh, why don't we just make up the rest? And the other guy's like, oh yeah, we should do that for sure. That gives us way more time to get high. <laughs> um, I'm not uh, really, I, this happened last year. We, uh, we, had a, we had a suspended kid because he got caught smoking weed during school. And I'm glad we got rid of him because I hate working anywhere there's someone cooler than me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not like a drug guy, you know? Like, I'm not cool enough to do drugs. Like, I just got a black t-shirt. <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, like, 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 I, I, but I will say, I think, I think as a music teacher, I should be allowed to do drugs in front of my students once a year to prove that they cannot make you cool on their own. Because, <laughs> like, if I had a crack pipe in front of my students, they'd be like, ha, ah, you're still a bitch, though. <laughs> um, I, uh, some, some people want to arm teachers. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> I'm talking about guns right now, and I'm about to piss my pants. <laughs> you know what would happen if I had a gun? Kids would just take it from me all day long. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, guys, it was funny the first time, it was funny the second time, but then it's the third time you're taking my gun from me today. <laughs> cool it on the gun taking. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, there are some times I wish I had a gun when I was teaching. <laughs> Like, there was one time this girl was talking in my class, I go, that's rude, please don't do that. And she goes, uh, I wasn't talking, I was banging my glue stick on the table. <laughs> like, that's better. <laughs> so she stands up, she locks eyes with me, and she goes, is this talking? Is this talking? Is this talking? I'm like, yeah, I wish I had a gun right now. <laughs> I pull it out, I go, this is what you want! <laughs> being a teacher, you never want to be a <laughs> I, uh, I found this out, I found out every year there's a presidential election, Nickelodeon lets kids vote on who should be the president. <laughs> and in 2016, the results were as follows. 54% of kids voted for Hillary Clinton, 22% voted for Donald Trump, and 11% voted for Gary Johnson. <laughs> who are these libertarian kids? <laughs> They come home from school every day, they're like, hey dad, I know you're upset you got laid off at the factory, but that's the price of the free market, baby. <laughs> they're like, call me crazy, but I think Mr. Krabs had the right ideas. <laughs> I, uh, I'm kind of a Bernie guy, and some people don't like it. Like, they, say, they say Bernie bros are weak on women's issues. That is not true. <laughs> I am just weak. <laughs> this is the whole thing. If a woman came up to me and she's like, do, you, do I have the right to choose what I do with my body? I'd be like, please stop talking to me, I'm so scared. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> uh, some people say the best day of your life is the day you have your first kid. Other people say it's the day you get married. What I know is anyone that's climbed Mount Everest lies every single day. Because <laughs> imagine being at a barbecue, someone comes up to you, they're like, hey, I heard you climb Mount Everest. How was that? And you're like, pretty great, but not as great as being married to Susan. <laughs> yeah, 4,000 people have reached the summit, but only three have been married to her, so. <laughs> She's my peak. <laughs> I, uh, I would, if this is my parents over the holidays, my dad goes, Andrew, you're gonna have a hard time getting engaged. You know, you're not going to buy an engagement ring because you're cheap. I go, it's not because I'm cheap, Dad. It's because I'm progressive. <laughs> a woman doesn't need a ring to know she's my property. <laughs> she's smart enough to know on her own. <laughs> I have OCD. Uh, if you don't know what OCD is, it's like internet pop-ups in your brain if they were all about murdering your family. <laughs> uh, so my treatment was I supposed to just go home, sit in my room, and think about hurting people. 
So I was doing that one day and my roommate came in. He goes, uh, what's going on in here? Are you meditating? I was like, premeditating. <laughs> yeah, <she was>, uh, <laughs> Alright, you guys are so much fun. Have a great night. You've had a long day, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I've had a great day, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> what, what grade do you teach? Well, I teach music, so I teach preschool through eighth grade. So the entire... Oh. That's the entire school I work at, yeah. Wait, yeah. have you been a small school? How do you... No, in Chicago, elementary schools are usually K through eight, and a lot of them are preschool, so preschool through eight. K through eight, wow, that's insane. Like, see, you really run the gambit on lessons, then. Yes. You're like a certified music genius, I feel like. To no. simplify it and then you always like up to the eighth grade. I mean, I don't know. You do figure it out. Oh, do you play an instrument? We play drums as my main instrument, yeah. Oh, okay. What other ones do you play? A little bit of everything. You play everything at about a sixth grade level. <laughs> <laughs> and then those eighth graders, that's when they get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> So bad. You killed it, Matt! <laughs> Cut! I don't know. You tell you gotta be live in the room, we keep it. <laughs> <laughs> teaching wise that you've experienced that you want to try jokes about that you just haven't gotten around to yet? But who knows? Who knows so what's to come, you know? I don't know. <laughs> Is that a subject you want to dive into? I, 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 we went on strike this year and I wrote a couple jokes about it and I'd like to write more because I think that was something that was very important and I think a lot of people didn't fully grasp the situation. I did. And I think it'd be nice to, you know, inform through that, but what a high purpose for you. After the show, people come up to me and said, that guy writes really dense. Do you, is that something you strive for, or is that something that comes natural to you? Yeah, actually it is. I really, a lot of people like to write jokes that uh, yeah. build, or yeah, I'd say build, or yeah. like, you know, they go for a while, but I, I just like to go very fast and not give people time to really think that much. It's, I, I think it's really fun to do comedy that way. So Just to... Just to Punch it in the next subject. Yeah, I, I I think my goal when I'm on stage is that I'd like to get off stage and have people go, whoa, that was a lot, and I I, I don't know. I just like to be fast and yeah, you know. If anyone that's climbed Mount Everest lies every single day. Because <laughs> imagine being at a barbecue, and someone comes up to you they're like, hey, I heard you climb Mount Everest. How was that? And you're like, pretty great, but now it's great being married to Susan. <laughs> yeah, 4,000 people have reached the summit, but only three have been married to her, so. <laughs> so you have a line there, you say, and I'm the third man to marry Susan. Oh, yeah. Whenever? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's like, uh, 5,000 people reach the summit, but only three have been married to her. Is the joke yeah, yeah, yeah. If what, so whenever a comedian, like, chooses, like, a specific detail, I always, I'm always curious, like, did you ever experience it, like, do you think it changes with the number? Can you make the number larger? Does that just get funnier, or do you think three is where it caps out? I think three is funny because if it was two, that's normal. Three is just one more. And then four or five, you think it doesn't it get It doesn't seem believable. <laughs> Who's been married four times? Not a lot of people. Three is like, well, that's a little odd, but... Uh. Yeah. Do you, do you think about that kind of stuff when you write a joke? Do you ever, like, like do you ever get into, like, the, the nitty-gritty of, like, yeah, a really, I, like, weird detail like I actually that? really do, like, thinking about jokes that way. And I would say, um, I also think three is a funnier number than two. It rolls out the tongue better, the cadence of the joke, just, just the way it sounds. I think three makes more sense than four, yeah. Do you have any other, like, nitpicky detail on a set or, like, the way you say something that you feel you have to be very precise on? I mean, yeah, usually when I write jokes, I think very carefully about which words I want to use, and I think about, okay, if I use this word, that's four syllables, but it sounds this way. If I use this word, it's two syllables. You break it down to syllables. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about it when I'm picking between words, yeah. Really? You have a bit that, or like a joke that you hold to be like the most beautifully written joke that you have. Well, I don't know. That Mount Everest joke I'm very proud of. That, that joke I did work very hard on, and, and for a very long time, that wasn't even the point of it, but it ended up, it ended up that way, and I'm very happy for that. Uh, I just, I don't know. I think, I think maybe it's, maybe it's a music thing. I've heard a lot of comedians talk about, like, rhythm, and you can kind of oh, get yeah. that, where people talk about, like, if you say certain things in a certain rhythm, it will come off as a joke, whether it really is truly, like, 
premise of a punchline, but there are some jokes that I think like the way they sound, it is like very satisfying to hear. Uh, but yeah, I like that joke. Um, are there a lot of like parallels between comedy and music? And if so, is there one that you can set I don't think there's anything really that parallel in the way that you perform them, but I think my approach is similar, where like, I, I guess I do think about rhythm a lot, but also to get good at music, a lot of people, a lot of people think music is like an innate thing, a lot of people think comedy is an innate thing, and I think the reality of it is you can develop them both as skills over time if you practice, so I mean like, it's really just about consistency, work ethic, and like building things, but yeah, I mean that's my, my opinion on that. Is there a subject that you want to hit on that you haven't gotten to? Yeah, I want to write a joke about Steamboat Willie. <laughs> I'm working on a joke about the Andy Griffiths show. <laughs> just a lot of, a lot of I love stuff. anything that's very contrived, like anything that's very contrived and very obscure. Um, I write jokes about jazz all the time, and most of them never work. So yeah. Do you have that problem where you write something that's like so like like it's so niche? Where like if you know you were if you're at, like if you're at a jazz convention you would murder, but you cannot say it anywhere else? I'd like to say yes, but also a lot of those jokes are probably not funny. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, like, I like jokes that are about very obscure topics, and I think that's very fun. So, I, yes. If anyone here uh, books for a jazz convention, please book Andrew Shanklin so we can try out these jokes that he's had for years that he's waiting to try out. All right.